In this video, I'll show you how to make this monthly work schedule in Excel where you can track all of the shifts each employee is working, add new shifts with the dropdown, track the number of shifts per day, and even check on the bottom to make sure there's no unmanned shifts. What makes this especially useful is that the dates are dynamic, so if I change from January to February, it updates the title as well as the weekdays automatically. If we scroll all the way to the right, we have the totals report where you can see the breakdown of the type of shifts each employee has worked as well as the totals. Let's go over how to make this step by step. First of all, we'll just put the start date over here and we can just type it right below. Let me say for now it's 2026 as the start date January 1st. With that, we can go ahead and make the title dynamic. So in here, I'm going to type equals and in quotations here, I'm going to say this is the monthly work schedule and then close those quotations actually let me add a space close the quotations and then an ampersand basically what i'm gonna do here is make it dynamic so that whenever it says let's say february here it's gonna switch to that so what i'm gonna do after the ampersand is put the text function hit the tab key here the value is depending on this date right here we want it to switch and the format that we want is in quotations we're gonna put the mmm three times here which is just to showcase the months and then the yyy three times in here as well that's for the year part hit enter there to see what it looks like you can see it's jan 2026 if we wanted to see the full january we can just change that to have four m's now if i go ahead and change the date in here from january to february you'll notice it updates nicely there next up we should add the details of each shift as well as the employee names so over here we could say this is the shift and then here can be the description for each shift so we can say there is a morning one with an m an afternoon one and a night shift and next to that we would describe what each one is so the different times for them and then down over here we can start putting everyone's name so let me fast forward how i do that awesome so here's the overall structure you can see that these are the different types of shifts that we're going to have available and i've just changed the highlight color and the fill color so one's over here and the fill color is over on this side down below i have some employee names and you can make this as long as you need now we need to actually add the dates right next to that so right here we're gonna use the sequence function but first let's change the date so it's january 1st up top and now here you could just use sequence and say one row comma and as the columns that's where you want all 31 days the problem is that's not going to be dynamic later on if instead of 31 we have 28 or 29 for february that's not going to work so we want to somehow link it back to the start date for that going back in here we're just going to change the second part and add the end of month function so it's going to identify whenever it's the end of the month so this is the start date comma and we want it to be zero months so it stays in this month of january instead of going over to the next one then we actually need to go minus and select this date so now we're including all of the dates not just the last one or not just the first one and then we're just gonna do a plus one in here so that we include the start date itself comma again and now the start date is simply going to be the start date we have in here we can close that parenthesis and hit enter now it goes from 1 to 31 that side's looking good and if i change this over to let's say february Let's see if it's updates over here. You can see it goes only to 28. So that's looking nice and clean. Right below that, it would be good to actually have the day. So is it a Monday? Is it a Tuesday, etc. And for that, we can use the text function. The value is this date right above it. And as the format in quotations, we can just put the D three times. So that's going to be abbreviated. So sun instead of Sunday. Now let's switch it back to January 1st and drag that all the way to the right. Awesome, the dates are nicely laid out and let's quickly work on the formatting. So this whole area right here, maybe the first part can be in a dark blue, Alt H H there. I'm going to choose this dark blue and I can choose the font color to be white. Then right below, maybe we can make this a lighter blue. Um, let's say I go for something like this. Nice. On top of that, for a start date here, maybe we can add some borders all around it like this just to make it stand out a bit more. And I'm also going to bolden the part right above it. As you've seen, even creating basic color formatting can be pretty tedious in Excel. Instead, a better tool for converting text to visuals is Napkin. For example, here I am in Napkin and I have a paragraph with text. 
All I need to do is click on this icon on the side to generate visuals. It's able to understand the context of what's written and suggest visuals based on that. There's some awesome choices already, but if you press some more, it generates even more options and if you scroll lower down, you can choose the specific visuals you want. After you choose a specific one, you can pick the theme, customize the colors, fonts and so much more. Once you're done with the visual, you can either keep it inside Napkin or use the different export settings, like exporting as a PowerPoint slide, where you can animate it and edit it even further. To import data into Napkin, you can either import it from other sources, generate it with AI, or simply type it manually. Overall, I think this is an awesome tool that can level up your visuals and save you a ton of time. So if you want to try it out, click in the link in the description below. And thanks to Napkin for sponsoring this video. Now we're ready to actually work on adding all of the different shifts right below. Now ideally, we don't want people manually entering like this is the morning. I'm just going to put a more, maybe another person only decides to put an M and this third person puts the full morning. That's really hard because we can't easily count these. Instead, what we should do is only allow for a drop down with three options. M, A or N. And for that we'll first select the whole relevant area which let's say is all the way to 31 here. Head over to data and we'll click on data validation. Within this part we want to choose a list that's going to be only three different values. So it can be an M, A or N based on this part right here. Hit enter there and press on OK. Now if we look we have this drop down and we really only have three choices. If I try to type afternoon or after, you'll notice that it gives an error which is exactly what we want. The options are nicely locked but right now it doesn't look very obvious so even if I put an M here and an A here, they're not that easy to distinguish. Ideally they should have some conditional formatting. Of course you can do this manually so I could just change the color for this one like that but obviously that's very tedious. And if there's any changes, you need to make sure you update it. So instead, a better method is using conditional formatting. And for this, we'll select that entire area again, the relevant part all the way till here. Head over to conditional formatting. And I'm going to go for highlight cell rules whenever they're equals to a specific value. So in this case, it's going to be whenever it's equals to an M here with is where we're gonna do some customizing so i'm gonna go for custom format let me move this back to the start so i know and i'm gonna change the fill color first to a green and i'm also gonna change the font color itself so it's gonna be right in here to this darker green and make it bold press on ok you can see the preview here of what that looks like looking pretty promising okay again so that's the m part done and instead of repeating that same process, we can then just go to manage rules and duplicate this rule. So we're going to press on duplicate and duplicate again. The second one is for the afternoon. So we're going to change that to A in here. And we also are going to change the formatting step by step. So let me fast forward how I do it for all three. Awesome. So right now, if I change it to an A here, it goes orange and for night is dark and then M for morning is green. Now that we're done with the conditional formatting in here, let me add some shifts randomly so we can work on the next step. Down over here, it would be nice to have a few different checks. Firstly, we want to find out how many shifts are currently working. We don't want to allocate too many people as that's pretty inefficient, but too little can lead to bad customer service. So right here, we're going to put the number of shifts. And actually, this is a pretty simple calculation. It's just a counter that simply counts how many values we have in here. So we've got three and let me just drag this over to the side. For the formatting, maybe we can add some borders on the top and the bottom. So I'm going to say top and bottom borders, which is this part right here. Nice, that's looking pretty clean. But right now, this metric of the number of shifts doesn't actually tell you if all of the shifts are covered. Maybe everyone's working in the morning and we have nobody at night. We want to be able to have some kind of check for that. So let me call this something like the coverage check and I'm going to italicize it with control I. Now this one's not that easy to do. So let me show you step by step. I'm going to first go count if, select all of this range right here. And as the criteria, here's where it gets a bit trickier. We're just going to add these parentheses like this. And within this area, 
First, we want to make sure that we have all of the letters. So M, comma, in quotations, A. And the final one is the N. Make sure you have the quotations and the commas in there. Close a parenthesis and hit enter. So right now you can see it's giving us three ones because all three are currently matched. Next up, we want to add a min up front here and simply close it on the other side. So whenever the number is the lowest, that's the one that it's going to show us. So if there is a zero, because one of these, let's say, is missing, I switch that to the morning. You'll notice that switches to a zero now. The final part of this formula is adding an if in front. So if all of this is the case and all of this is equal to zero, then we need to do something, which is firstly to say that it's missing or that the shift is missing. You can kind of write that however you want. And if not, we'll just leave it empty like this. Close that parenthesis and hit enter. So this one says it's missing. The next one should too, but the third one should be empty as you can see right here because we covered all of the shifts in the day. Now let's drag this all the way across. Now that we have the check set up, a good next step would be to see the totals. Ideally, I want to know maybe Sam has he been working too much on the night shift or too much on the morning shift. All of that is important information. Personally, I used to work as a bellman when I was 18 and it's very annoying if you're always being put on the night shift without the manager realizing, so it would be nice to see that breakdown. And for this, we first want to be able to scroll over to the side while still seeing the employee names. So what we'll do for that is freeze this column so that when we look to the side, it's still gonna be there. For this, we can just go to the very top here under C1 and I'm gonna go over to View and click on Freeze Panes. Now you'll notice that part's frozen, so I can keep scrolling to the side where hopefully we'll have the totals in this area. Let's also actually add a header right here, so maybe we can change the color of this part into a dark blue as well. So I'm gonna change it from here to a dark blue and the inside in white. Awesome, that's looking a bit cleaner. Over to the side, let me add the totals. You can see that I just have a merge and center. Just to do that, we can press on this button here. I'm gonna call this the totals report. And within this area, we're gonna have those that have worked the morning shift, those that have worked the afternoon, and then those that have worked the night shift as well as the total shifts. So that's gonna be kind of the count of all of the shifts for them. When it comes to the formulas we'll use, this should actually be fairly straightforward as it's just gonna require a count if hit the tab key here and this is the whole range let's go ahead and select it from the very start so within this whole area right here awesome there we have it and i'm just gonna actually lock it by pressing the f4 key here not once not twice but three times such that it always stays within this range but it can still move down so when we drag this formula down to the other employees it's still going to be correct and the criteria firstly for the morning one is that it has to say m it's only gonna count when that's the case. Now I can drag this down. I can also copy this to the side, but this time you'll notice that we need to change from an M to an A for the afternoon. And same thing with this night one, we're gonna have to change that from an A to an N for the night. Now I can just drag this all the way down to the bottom. If I move it over to the side, we can see a lot better that Sam has been working morning and afternoon, but no night shifts. So maybe that's not entirely fair to Leila, who's been working only the night shifts. For the total, that's just going to be the sum of these three. And we can just drag this over to the bottom. Let me quickly format this area too. Maybe just by adding some headers like that. And then right, right below it, maybe I can change the coloring to a lighter blue. Let's say I go for this one right here. I can also delete this whole part. So I'm going to press Ctrl minus here. It looks nice and clean. Because there's quite a few numbers in this section, it would be nice to make it a bit more visible. Maybe firstly for the total shifts, we can bolden that part. And then secondly, we can add some data bars. So it's going to be this part right here, data bars. This is going to show relative to the other employees who's been working the hardest. So it looks like right here, Sam Smith has been working extra hard, whereas Dirk hasn't been doing much. So maybe it's time to add more shifts to him. Before we go over how to extend this for other months, it's pretty important to find out what today's date is within this file. So ideally we have some kind of highlights or maybe some lines around the whole cell or the whole column where it's today's date. That way if we're currently here on Saturday the 3rd let's say, 
we can clearly find out that this one is still missing a shift to 6, so we want to work on that more urgently than maybe some in the future. So for this, we're going to do some conditional formatting. And first, I'm going to select this whole area from the top part right here. So from the one all the way to the number of shifts, that's the part that I would like maybe highlighted. I'm going to select it all the way to the end, head over to conditional formatting and choose new rule. And this is going to be based on a formula. So within this whole part, go to the very last one that says use a formula. And this is where we want to type it in. So the first cell for us is going to be C10. So we'll put an equal sign C $10. Make sure you add the dollar sign in there. And whenever that's equals to today, so we'll add the today function in it. Open and close the parentheses. We want something to happen. And for that, we need to add formatting. So let's say under the border, I'm going to add a border on the left side and on the right side like that. I want the color to be in red so it stands out a bit more. Let me add that again. So it's in red this time. Nice. This is what it looks like. Let's quickly see it. I'm going to press on OK. And you'll notice that today's date is Friday the 2nd. So this one's highlighted with these red borders. And whenever it's tomorrow, the file's going to be highlighted on this next one. So I think that's a pretty neat feature. And don't forget to check out Napkin to generate great visuals for Excel or presentations. So if you want to try it out, click in the link in the description below. In this case, we've just worked on the January schedule, so let me show you how to add more months. For instance here, let's suppose we want to add the February next. You can, of course, just change this one to February, but that means you lose all of the January data. So instead, you can just press Ctrl and drag this over to the right like that. Let me rename this the February one. So that's a duplicate that we've just created, but we're going to change this to be February. The title changes, so does this part obviously, as well as the dates right here on the bottom. If we go over to the side, we only have 28 days now, but we need some small cleaning to do over here, so we'll just change that. All of these should still be working correctly. So other than that, we're pretty much good to go here, and for the cells themselves, so obviously the shifts are going to be different this time, we can simply select all of them and just press the delete key once, and you'll see everything resets to zero. Whenever we start adding new ones, that's going to start to get accounted for in the totals as well. Right now, we've just created a tracker for employee shifts. That said, if you also want a tracker for specific tasks, you should watch this video over here, or you can take our Excel course over here. Hit that like and that subscribe, and I'll catch you in the next one.